you know those memories that you get on Facebook um, that shows you something that you did X amount of time ago? Uh, well, one of them happened for me a couple of weeks ago, and it was the very first astrophotography photo that I've ever taken. And it was not long after we moved down to North Central Victoria from the Gold Coast. And I remember taking this photo, I remember it just like it was yesterday, I had a Canon 7D, it was a kit lens that was on this um, camera, and I put it on a tripod and I took it out on top of this mound of dirt, because you could see so many stars in the sky at night. And uh, we, we just weren't used to that on the Gold Coast. So I took this camera out and I put it on the tripod, and I thought, well, it needs a long time, so I set it up for 30 seconds, and just by pure luck, the focus was right. Um, didn't even try doing that. Anyway, I put the sh pushed the shutter button, it took the photo, and the photo that came out of that camera, I was blown away by it. I was so impressed by it. And if anybody's ever been out there, the very first astrophotography photo that you ever take, you're always blown away by it. So anyway, I was chuffed as nuts. I took this photo, I put it onto social media, and I showed all these different groups around the place um, how good this photo was. And, and, and all these guys who have been doing it forever and a day, they basically said, man, that's crap. Um, well, not in so many words, but you get the gist. Uh, and uh, they said, y your stars are full of star trails. And, and I'm like, star trails, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? So I went and started Googling this star trails business, and I found that, yeah, it's kind of bad. So I ended up with these trails on the stars, and then I saw these other photos of people who are intentionally doing it, um, making this star trail photography. And, and I thought, I bet this started when someone took a photo of stars and just forgot to shut the shutter again and just left it open for hours and, and had this big, great big circle through the sky. I bet that's how the bloody star trail photography started. Um, so look, um, you're not here because you want to learn how to take photos with a camera and a, and a nice big fast lens. You're here because you've seen a photo of star trails and I've told you you can do it on a phone and you can do it on a phone. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how to do it. G'day guys, Shane here. If you're into mobile photography, I do tutorials every Monday and every Thursday we also do a three minute Thursday where we do something nice and quick. Is it going to be three minutes? Probably not, that's just what I call it. But uh, if you're into mobile photography and you're, and you're always looking to learn something cool about mobile photography, different apps and things like that, subscribe to the channel and uh, follow us along the journey. Like any sort of astrophotography, the very first thing we need to work out is the planning. Where we're going to shoot, what we're going to shoot, the subject, and what time the Milky Way will be around that, that uh, subject. So we don't need to track the Milky Way as such with star trail photography. Basically, if you're in the southern hemisphere, point south. If you're in the northern hemisphere, point north. And you're going to be pretty right. Um, at different times of the year, the center of the circles that you see on the star trail photography will be higher or lower, and the subject that you choose will be dependent greatly on where that is. If you're not too concerned about having the center of that circles uh, in the star trail photography, it doesn't really matter. If you point generally south in the southern hemisphere and generally north in the northern hemisphere, you're going to find some pretty cool photos. Um, so let's talk about this tree. This tree is right at the back of our place. Uh, it's, it was a, it's a big old willow tree, it's a dead tree now. Uh, a few months ago, oh, I'm gonna say almost 12 months ago, the neighbor that we have, he, he, uh, he burnt out his property on, on purpose, like to get rid of weeds and stuff like that. Anyway, the fire got nice and close to the willow tree and it just burnt the guts out of the willow tree and it's dead as dead now. Um, but uh, with astrophotography, dead trees make really cool subjects. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy that it's done what it's done because now I've got this tree with no leaves so there's nothing blowing around in the wind at night. Um, you don't need to worry too much about that uh, and, and it makes a really good, sub good subject. So um, let's talk about this app. Now, some time ago, I, uh, maybe a month or so ago, I did a uh, tutorial or a review if you like, a comparison sort of a video with uh, the Slow Shutter app, the Moment app and the native camera app on the iPhone. And one of the comments that I had on that video was from a fellow named Mark, I think it was Mark, and he asked about, is the Moment app any better than the Night Cap app? Well, for doing what I was doing, I'm gonna say no, it was no better. Um, but for Star Trails, it is really good. So I'll put a couple of photos here. This is a photo that I took with the Night Cap app and this is on the star mode. So it's a 15 second photo, and you can see there that the camera really struggled with focus, um, and it really struggled with the noise. I took exactly the same photo 
sitting on the tripod, just change the app to the native camera app and it does such a better job. So Mark, to answer your question, um, the Moment app versus the Night Camera app or the Night Cap app, um, they both do roughly the same job. There's definitely better things out there to do than Milky Way photography and on an iPhone, especially the iPhone 11 Pro, it's just the camera app. It does a really good job. When it comes to star trails though, I haven't actually found anything that does it really well. I've tried it with the slow shutter app, it doesn't do it that well. I've tried it with the moment app, it doesn't do it well at all. But with this night camera app, or night cap app, it does it really, really well. All right, so let's have a chat about this app and what it can do. As far as using this app goes, it's, it's really not complicated and that's why you're here, because it's not complicated. So basically you need to set your camera up on a tripod, has to be on a tripod, you can't do it any other way, it has to be on a tripod. Set it up on a tripod, open up the app, hit the star button down the bottom, select star trail photography or star trails option, and that's it. Hit the button, it'll count down to whatever the shutter, whatever your uh, uh, release time is, it might be three seconds, might be five seconds, uh, and let that camera go. The key thing to this, it must be at least 15 minutes long. It won't take the photo otherwise. And other than 15 minutes long, that's really it. I will say that the longer you leave this in play, as in the longer the shutter goes for, the better these star trail photos will be. All right, so there's not really much else to talk about. Let's go um, cut this off now and we'll get back into it later on when it's dark. All right, see you then. All right guys, so obviously it's night time now. We're out at the tree, we've done our recon, we've looked at the app, and now we're gonna take some photos. Like I said last time in the uh, video that we did on the Samsung versus the iPhone, we're just gonna set the camera up on a tripod or the phone up on a tripod. I'm gonna shine a torch up onto the tree here so we know that the composition is where I want it to be. So we'll open up the night cam app. So in the night cam app here, we're gonna hit the star down the bottom. We're in landscape mode at the moment. So I'll hit the star down the bottom here and we're on stars mode. We don't want to be on stars mode. We'll touch that takes a couple of seconds to catch up um, and we're going to turn on star trails mode. Once that light turns green for star trails, you know we're set up for star trails. But uh, I'll shine the torch up on there and you can see there how exactly um, this tree is going to look in the composition of the photo. And I think that's pretty good there. And all we need to do now is press the start button, the timer will count down and that's it. We walk away now. We've got to give it a, well, as long as you want to give it. <clears throat> the photo that I've taken here, this took, this took uh, about two and a half hours, this photo. So this is not a photo that you want to take um, when you've got nothing to do one, one evening and you say, well, I'm just going to duck outside for 10 minutes. It's not going to happen. This is a photo that takes a long time to do. It's not a happy snap. Um, you need to do the planning, like we talked about earlier. You need to prepare yourself that this photo is going to take a long time. This is not a, a 30 second photo. This isn't a five minute photo. This is a, a few hours photo um, or an all night sort of photo. Um, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind with this sort of photo. In North Central Victoria at least, that um, it's pretty cold time of year when we're taking these sorts of photos. You can take star trails, mind you. You can take star, star trails any time of the year. Winter time, autumn, winter, spring is the best time to take these sorts of photos because the days are shorter and the nights are longer, so you get a longer shutter speed, a longer uh, duration of the star trails. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind with this. One, prepare yourself, it's going to be cold. Two, bring a book or something else to do because your phone's being used. Uh, three, the battery power is going to absolutely plummet on that phone because it's so cold. Um, this is a photo that takes a long time. Um, on the iPhone 11, I'll be able to take a photo of probably four or five hours before I start thinking, I'm probably gonna need to do something with that battery. So what can you do around this? You can get power banks, plug a power bank straight into it. It'll feed the battery whilst you're taking the photo. Just strap it to your tripod and you'll be fine. Which leads me to the tripod. You'll absolutely need a tripod. You cannot do this sucker handheld. It's a few hours long, all right? Um, and that's about it, guys. So. Uh, we'll let this finish. I'll show you the photo when we're done. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you enjoy this sort of tutorial, give me a like down the bottom. If you want to learn about another sort of app or you'd like me to try something else for you or learn how to do something else, leave a comment in the bottom and I'll see what I can do for you. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.